Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Have a little bit of an update to the good old camera over here. It might be a little bit smoother, but it looks like the color is a little bit off. So if you are a camera expert, if you know how to use a green screen, well, please do hit, please do let me know. And as always, wish you the best of the best Tuesdays. Yeah, Tuesdays. Hey, I hope you're having a great Tuesday out there in cryptocurrency. Let's get into the live scene right over here. Bitcoin's been doing very little in the overnight hours. Uh, kind of a hunt both ways is what it looks like on the lower time frames. Let's actually start there on the four hour, perhaps. Let's just get these done and over with. And essentially, this is the general look on this baby. We got this guy right over here and this guy right over here. And that symmetrical triangle is still very much in play. And as long as this symmetrical triangle is in play, as long as it's not been, not been negated, I am looking for the measure move to be hit somewhere down around here around 3250 ish area now this again is in play as long as we are essentially below and closing two hour dildos below this breakdown point right over here at around 3850 3840 ish area on uh, gdax and of course it's going to be you know around the same area on different exchanges but but again you know somewhere around there Anyways, as long as Bitcoin's kind of within this range right over here, things do feel uh, barty. I don't like it. Barty, <laughs> I can't believe I use these terms. It's so ridiculous that I even use these terms, that I even acknowledge that they exist. But my God, I guess it's the best way to really uh, get this information out. Anyways, whenever Bitcoin essentially puts in what appears to be a very bearish pattern, you know, a bit, this is a bear flag by all intents and purposes. But when everyone's looking at the same thing and you see all the people on crypto YouTube and crypto Twitter get bearish, everyone's calling for like, you know, 3,000, 2,900, whatever it might be. I get very, 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 very skeptical. You know, these patterns can be painted in the charts especially in the altcoins, which have a lot less liquidity, a lot less like actual trading going on in there. So it doesn't really take all that much money to really set these things up. But uh, liquidity hunts in the early morning hours for myself and then and then liquidity uh, hunt to the upside right over here. I did get out of my position that I showed yesterday on stream. Uh, I am now just holding a uh, short, the, the same short from 6300. I don't really consider that like uh, an active position. It's kind of in the background passive. I'm, I'm holding that as long as Bitcoin's in a downtrend, essentially. Um, but my lower time frame scalp, I did close. I didn't get the ultimate bottom down around here, but I got about 34.90, 34.80 a share, which is good enough, um, especially on that sort of uh, on, on that sort of uh, streamer account right there, because I don't really want to be doing too much. Uh, 50 bitcoins on that account is, you know, it's, it's I mean, it's 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 a good amount, so I don't really want to be going too much over that. Again, it is just a streamer account, so. So overall, lower time frames do look like a bear flag. However, these are your classic BART, so to speak. Again, there's no like real rules for an actual BART or anything like that. It's a completely made up pattern. But typically speaking, when you get something that is just very obviously, you know, one way, whether it's bullish or bearish, like a, like a bull flag, bear flag, rising channel, rising wedge, you know, and the opposite, of course, as well. Uh, typically speaking, you just get the other, the opposite happening. Why, why does that happen? Well, you know, you can come up with all the potential explanations. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It hap it, you know, it happens probably because it, there's only traders left in this market. It's not like, it's not like retailers are coming back into the market or anything or anything like that, or they're not running the market to begin with. So, so, you know, when everyone's looking at the same sort of pattern, right, when everyone's got the, got their eyes and thinking the same thing, well, how do you generate liquidity from these people? Well, you run it the other way from what everyone's thinking because everyone's, you know, people like their patterns, right? Anyways, I'm talking too much about that and not enough about actual stuff that matters. Anyways, this support right over here, 3510, is still not broken, you know, again, a couple of weeks below it. Um, and as long as Bitcoin is essentially above, or above there, don't really want to be, you know, I don't really want to be too damn bearish having like a p big positional to the downside by the same token you do have resistance right over here 3550 and same you know same sort of uh explanation for that guy as well as long as we're as long as we're below there i mean not really bullish not really in danger of like a massive bart and if bitcoin were to break down below this 3510 ish area which i do believe is probably more likely especially when you're in a bear market and you know everything doesn't look too damn hot although again everyone's too fucking bearish already so it's like which one do you want you know which, you know pick your poison right um I'd be looking somewhere down around here for the next uh, uh, for the next um, support around 3350 to 3400 ish area. That would line up and make sense with this guy, perhaps as a nice little. I mean, do you want to? <laughs> you can call this a lot of things right here. I'm gonna do something that that. Technically speaking, um, no, I'm not going to do it. It's, it. I shouldn't talk about that kind of shit. Anyways, I'll, I'll talk about this one right over here, though. You know, when Bitcoin puts in what looked to be some sort of a rising channel, again, bear flag, you know, what do you want to call it? It's not, it's not perfectly parallel, but it does kind of work. Uh, if, if we make a measure move off this guy, where does this point down towards, which was resolved um, over this past weekend? Again, volume on this, a little bit lackluster, so there is certainly question marks with it. That's actually pointing all the way down to the prior low at 3130. 
So is that in the cards? Perhaps I'm going to get rid of that right now. And, you know, if we do look at this guy as a bear flag as well, which, you know, technically it is uh, where this one be pointed down towards. Well, let's just make a nice little mesh move on this guy as well and see where it would come up with. Does it match up with anything else? Is it, is it around anything else? And look at that. It's right around the 3350 ish area. So if this area is to break the 3510 ish area, then yes, I do start looking down around here. But again, I do have my apprehensions with that just because everyone's, you know, everyone's thinking the same thing right now. And that is. Mm, typically a red flag typically a red flag now let's go over here to the shorts and longs on uh, on finex uh the long funding position or sorry the 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 long uh daily interest rate has actually uh more than halved in the last 12 hours since we spoke last now yesterday was a pretty special day i've never seen it that high at not point one four one five percent that's pretty insane that's pretty crazy i i can't recall a time on finex not bit mexico bit mexico i've certainly seen it that high but not on finex um at least in the last year uh short funny rate over here just about non-existent and overall we still have about thirty thousand open longs versus a little under twenty three thousand open shorts with uh, about almost 4,000 of those hedged. So we have about a little under 19,000 open shorts versus again, a little under 30,000 open longs. So we have actually been losing longs recently, which is also a little bit of a warning sign as well. When Bitcoin is in one of these positions where you know, it's right at a support and the longs are letting their positions go. Well, what does that mean? I mean, that, that, that means that those people sold. So if Bitcoin's not breaking a support like this, little bit concerning as well for for more immediate downside uh when i do look at the uh, or sorry we've been looking at this for a while as well you know the short positions on finex represented in a chart and uh anytime that anytime that bitcoin gets down around into this low twenty thousand region you know it does line up with some pretty ma nasty dumps i mean you got this guy right over here august uh august of this past year major dump early august then we had you know this guy right over here that's your major dump of well november you know six thousand breaking you probably heard of that one and we're once again around this area i know people people are drawing like trend lines like this you can't do trend lines on a fucking longs and shorts chart it's a very incomplete piece of the whole you can't do like Elliott waves on them you can't do fucking you can't look at your indicators your momentum officers are not going to make sense they are very incomplete pieces but they but we can actually gain information on what they do from a historical standpoint at those levels and anytime that we do get down into like a critical level these spikes down you know especially over here in january that was your january dump february dump right over here um it, it, that that is worthwhile to look at. Uh, by the same token, any any time that it gets above about thirty one thousand open shorts, that actually ma matches up with massive pumps. Um, you probably remember this guy over here in April. That was like a you know fifteen hundred dollars uh, dildo within the span of really like an hour, uh, something like that. It, it was it was crazy. I, I I'm sure a lot of people remember that. And each and every one of these guys actually do match up with pretty massive pumps or just pumps in general. Um, same thing over here on the longs chart, right? Uh, we did get above the critical area for the longs at thirty three thousand, which typically lines up with massive dumps each and every one of these times. You know get big 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 dump um and coming coming down as long as just to beat their positions but again with bitcoin not really moving and not really breaking a major resistance right here or sorry support uh it does make you think and this is why i, I really want to distance myself from from both from both of the extremes right you have the extreme people who say i'm so certain of five thousand it's definitely happening it's like okay Tell me more about how 10,000 was going to be the high of the Bitcoin in 2017. Tell me, tell me more about that one, huh? Tell me more about, well, basically buying every fucking hundred dollars down. We don't need to mention names here, but you know who I'm talking about. And by the same token, I don't want to, I don't want to be on the super bears case where, you know, you have all the people on crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube talking about how Bitcoin's going to shoot down straight to 25, 26, 2800, whatever it might be. Uh, I think that it, what's more likely is we get something similar to what we got at 6,000, which, you know, if we extend this trend line right over here and this guy right over here what are we looking at well we're looking at a what well, we're looking at a sending trend line essentially governing our lower highs but remember this symmetrical triangle right over here does have a measure move back down to the former low of this guy pretty much almost one to one at 3250 ish area that is also going to line up with the uh, if we go over here to bitstamp that's going to line up with the 200 simple moving average on this guy and overall I do believe that Bitcoin's probably just going to be oscillating between those two levels. I do believe that Bitcoin, I strongly believe that Bitcoin makes lower lows over time, but over time being that critical component right now. Uh, so the 200 symbol is going to be, you know, quite a bitch to chew through, I'd imagine. And of course, we do have that measure move pointed down there as well as some, you know, some, some past prior uh, historical support. In fact, actually, that is 
that is quite important to even point out right here. Putting this guy back on, you'll notice that that lower support trend line actually does match up perfectly with this spike low in September, middle of September 2017. That was one of the times that China banned Bitcoin, and you were probably around for that area. Uh, where Bitcoin essentially went down about 40% in the span of what was really a few days, uh, about a week, but you know, done, done mostly in a few days. Um, so again, pretty damn intense price action, and that is why I think Bitcoin's going to spend some time, you know, filling this area out. You're not necessarily going to see a straight shot down. You're not going. You're not going. Well, you're very unlikely to see a straight shot up because this is really dog shit chart. Um, again, nothing's changed from a higher time frame perspective. Let's let's start with let's let's go with the daily here. Again, this is very 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 orderly drop off in volume. That's corrective by the nature of it. Uh, I'd like to look. I'd like to see another spike in volume down around here. That's probably going to bring it back down to the former lows. Again, I shouldn't say these sorts of things. That's bad technical analysis, but probably gonna happen um yeah, as bitcoin essentially spends its time uh filling out this area uh let's see what our let's see what our mom also is over here are we going to be getting any chicken tennies late uh soon well stokes over here crossing down um yeah i mean more bearish than not but it's <laughs> that can stay down there for quite some time to be fair uh daily rsi well below the exponential and into the bearish control zone again just also in between the bearish the bearish control zone and the neutral zone that's how you knew that also this was basically just a bearish consolidation and look at our dmi adx we are actually beginning a trend now we are actually beginning a trend as of the last couple of days uh dmi minus is the dominant trend but we're not really getting a full-on signal of this bitch just yet i want to see this thing above the signal line at around 20, at least 24 but preferably 25 uh to signal that we are ready to roll again to me this is just exactly what everything else says and, and essentially consolidation daily jewel finding some resistance along that uh, along the slow right over there the the pink the the light blue tap in the pink and well so far it's resistance i mean i, I really don't like taking signals this far deep into the into the red territory on the jewel just because well it's Typically, it doesn't stay down here for too long, but when it does trend down here, I mean, you know, it, it's it could it could certainly it could certainly you know pop all the way back down around here. I mean, if this if this this does look like a rejection, to be fair, I mean, that would be a sell signal. It's just these are di more difficult ones to take. Uh, but they do work out, especially in trending moves. Uh, by the way, if you do have the jewel, there has been an update made. Refresh your trading view and uh, and select the new version, version two, baby. Uh, nice little, nice little, uh, nice little gift in the morning. And there probably will be more coming, uh, you know, in the in, in the future. But basically, this this one is just a visceral upgrade, uh, essentially denoting where better entries are. You know, like a picture perfect entry, so to speak. Um, of course, don't want to just use it blindly, although it is the best indicator that I know, but I'd still have to be very adamant about saying, please do not treat any indicator blindly, even the jewel. Uh, two day diddle chart right over here. Two day diddle chart is, uh, we'll be closing later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We haven't got a new tick on this guy, but I do want to put on the 10 simple because this is, where is this guy coming in around? Yeah, still, you know, still kind of coming around that 3690 uh, ish area. As long as Bitcoin is essentially below this prior swing low at 3690, I am bearish. Uh, and sorry, well, let's go back to the daily for a second. Let's see if these guys are still divergence. And they. They aren't diverging, but they certainly are not collapsing on each other either. They're not converging by the same token. So when I'm looking at the 10 symbol, this red uh, moving average and comparing it to the yellow 21 exponential moving average, uh, again, I think of it like a histogram, like a MACD histogram. And when they gain momentum away from each other, that's telling you that the trend is strengthening in that direction. So in this case, it would be down with this, with this, with the faster period, essentially, you know, pushing it further down. Um, but of course, you know, price action first, but I do put a lot of weight on this as it does help get rid of the noise. This is how we knew that this area right over here, just consolidation as we put in some lower highs. This area, again, just consolidation. Even when you got this test of the 21 exponential, that was rejected pretty damn quickly and full and the, and the real direction is, is revealed as we once again get below all major moving now just right over here. Not good. Uh, let's go check out the three day. What is a three day doing? We just closed another three day, I believe last night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And this is very important right here. The three day little stochastics have actually crossed. They have crossed down. They've confirmed a cross down and now they're gaining momentum to the downside. All important and and just as important over here, getting rejected from the new from getting out of the neutral zone. Again, the last time that this thing even had a cross down was over here. This was the break of 6000. You know, you've probably heard of that. Uh, and again, you know, you're, you're getting insight into you're basically getting insight into what the what the higher level bots are thinking right here and essentially not letting this thing get out of the, you know, really even out of the bearish control zone, out of the neutral zone. Um, this thing, whenever it does cross, especially with my settings, is pretty 
fucking accurate. I mean, it, it got it nailed the bottom and it, it's nailed the top so uh, so far. And we are just getting a fresh cross down. So yeah, I am short over here. I, I will be holding on to the short. I will be looking to add to it. Um, but uh, again, I need to. I, I would like to get a better position right now. We do have CMEs still very much in play, still very much uh, relevant over here. The gap at around uh, 36, 38, 35, 85, right over here. If we get a nice dildo body right in that area, um, perhaps today as the U.S. markets join join the uh, join the open session once again, well, that would be lovely. That would be you know a picture perfect type thing. Perhaps that matches up with the Bart on spot exchanges, and then you know you can lick you can liquidate all the people who think that their genius is getting short right here, and then just run it the other way. Classic Bitcoin shit, pl classic Bitcoin shit. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for to put on a real position. Like I said, I closed the one yesterday that I started at 35.50. Um, so yeah, uh, speaking of CMEs, do we have anything to be aware of over here? It is slumping, it, it certainly is slumping down. And you know, this this was a symmetrical triangle right over here, which does have a measure move t pointing all the way down to 3,400. But I'm not getting the reaction or the volume characters of this uh, being a confirmed breakout. So that's why I'm hesitant to, to play this one. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I gave it a try last night on stream, but uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm comfortable with where my position is right now. Now, of course, there's very little that is, you know, bullish about this chart. <laughs> very little that's bullish about this chart, but... At the same point in time, there is a right time to be putting on those positions. And I, I, I think right now the ROI on waiting for a better entry is perhaps is higher. Uh, over, going over to the four hour total time frame, you know, sorry, not the four hour, but let's go back to the three day. We have not finished this guy up just yet, but uh, three day right over here. And oops, let's go down. Let's go back to our GDAX chart. And you can see that the DMI ADX signaling nothing, although the DMI minus is the dominant trend, but you know, it's not really telling you too much. Uh, RSI over here getting back below the exponential. That is a new tick. That is not good. And still in the bearish control zone, still playing out some hidden bearish divergence. Um, and yeah, Jewel not really telling you too much here either. In fact, this will be, th this will likely act as a little bit of support. Uh, but the slow is so far away from this thing right now that it's, th this is not, that, that is not a signal I'd be taking either which way. Again, three day little death cross right over here, green 55 to the to, to the downside of the, of the purple 200. I mean, as long as you're below all mo major movement averages right now, as they, and, and they are migrating lower and lower, but by the way, they are all below 6,000 now, well below 6,000. Uh, that puts a lot of downwards pressure on, on price action. So from a higher level time frame perspective, uh, I don't really see Bitcoin getting back above 6,000 any time soon and when I say anytime soon I mean you know like in the next few months um, probably even then I mean, I mean I could uh, I mean, if I'm giving you my personal opinion I don't, I don't even think it's it's like until the end of the year or even year or even later than that it's gonna take a long time uh, Bitcoin spent three years going basically just straight up it's gonna spend some time going down although it has has already been over a year so you know, uh, overall, a uh, perspective of the higher level dildo timeframes is, you know, uh, going to do you uh, uh, more good than bad. So looking at this guy right over here, there's there's absolutely nothing bullish about the three day dildo chart. Again, as long as you're below the swing low right over here, you know, the same thing on the two day, essentially, you know, just replicated right over here. Uh, clear rejection of the 10 simple and, you know, and, and down. We just got the 100, the 100 exponential cross on the downside of the purple 200 right over here. Not anything to really be aware of, but it's now like all major movement averages are essentially just opening up and spreading out down which is you know that's it's hard to be bullish when things look like that uh to put it lightly um so yeah let's go back on over to perhaps the two hour and let's see what can what can we gauge off of this guy can we gauge anything more off these time frames um I believe that is really just as simple as this. If Bitcoin does break back above 3550-ish area, where is it likely to go is, is the real question I'd imagine. And I'd be looking somewhere a little bit above 3600, maybe retest this breakdown point essentially, uh, somewhere right around this range. Maybe I put another horizontal right over here. That's th 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 This would be like the picture perfect entry if we got a BART up to fill the CME gaps. And then perhaps even, I mean, remember over here on GBTC, uh, GBTC, while it is in a rising channel, while it is technically a bear flag, it does have a massive gap right over here. Now, of course, I don't want to make gaps a meme because I feel like a lot of people are talking about them now with very little understanding of it, which is, you know, it's a good thing. People are, you know, people are educating themselves. That's great. You know, I'm all about that. But they're also making a lot of really bad inferences. So to put it bluntly, uh, 
gaps do not have a time component on them. You don't have to fill them anytime soon. It can be a year. It can be two years. It could be fucking, you know, five years in some cases in some traditional equities. Do I think that this one's going to take five years to fill? No. I also can't say the same thing about OTC. I can say that I can say that in traditional markets, from what I've looked at, every gap that I've ever seen in history has been filled. In OTC bullshit, I can't say that. And GBTC is OTC bullshit, although probably better than most things uh, that trade OTC. Um, but again, you know, overall, just very, 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 very corrective price action going around here. Uh, this is a bearish pattern. This is, you know, this this is likely to be resolved to the downside. But does it get another stab back up to the six uh, four dollars and sixty nine cent region? Fill this gap, you know, in confluence with with CME's gap getting filled, and then Bitcoin, you know, just just liquidating some more over aggressive, over leveraged shorts. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible. We do have this guy opening up today, later today, with uh, regular U.S. markets. They were on holiday yesterday. Mr. Martin Luther King having a dream for good old Bitcoin and magic internet monies to be, once again, re revealed and revered and accepted by the masses. I have a dream that one day my Bitcoin gangs and my Litecoin gangs and my Ripple Me Timbers gangs will all sit down at the table of peace and prosperity and, and eat together. Whatever the fuck that means. But hey, <laughs> everyone's in a gang, man. Uh, again, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at this. I, I need to, you know, whichever one happens first, uh, does Bitcoin or sorry, does GBTC break four dollars and what is this like 27 cent or sorry, 25 cent area right over here? Or does it pop back up into this area? Whichever one happens first, I'll take a position off of uh, still looking extremely bearish, still looking extremely nasty. I mean, there's, you know, very little good things about this chart daily below all major moving averages. I mean, the 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 daily looks like it could snap. Um, daily is pretty weak. Uh, and if it does snap, we do have a mesh move off this bear flag pointing all the way down to about this next horizontal uh, from historical standpoint down around uh, $2. And what is this like 56 and a half cents, something like that. Yeah, so not not necessarily the best, uh, the best setup of all time. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go look at the daily for, for CMEs, by the way, this, this chart is just significantly easier to read. In fact, uh, if I showed you this chart, I, I, I'd have a hard time believing that I, th I think most people would would be able to see. Okay, this is uh, I can make money trading this. Not bad. Um, daily does daily does not really have a gap over here. To be fair, uh, so that is that uh, that is worth mentioning. Also, the ten simple moving average and the 20, 21 exponential moving average they never even cross to the upside like you did see in the spot charts. That's why this thing is just it gets rid of the noise, right? Because there's no weekend trading, which is my theory on why the two day little chart seems to work better than the daily on spot exchanges like BitMexco, you know. Binance, Safu bullshit, and Finex, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but you also, but but more importantly, you do see these these moving averages diverging once again as the trend strengthens to to the downside, perhaps the dark side, perhaps. So while while you know everyone is bearish, and that is certainly cause for concern, uh, it is for good reason. I mean, if you're just looking at this with with not without knowing anything else. That's exactly what I'd say. I mean, you look at your you look at your ten hour right over here, which I do like. Uh, Stokes just just crossing down, getting rejected from getting to the bullish control zone. Uh, DMI ADX actually giving you almost a fresh short signal as well as the ADX starts to crawl its way up. Um, our side deep into the bearish control zone, you know, not uh, typically not not the best things. We do have basically the same signature, I believe, on spot exchanges. Um, oh, actually, 10 hours getting pretty far down into here, but still not really losing up its control. Uh, this 10 hour will be ending in the next uh, hour and nine minutes. So if it does end like this, going to be well perceived as just another rejection, actually. And in fact, the 10 hour is. Um, the 10 hour actually does get price action very well. If you if you don't have this chart on your um, if you don't have this chart or, or this time frame on your charts, I would I would highly suggest uh, using it. It does seem to really get a lot of price action um, decently, and especially with the oscillators as well. It does it does get rid of a lot of the noise. Um, so yeah, let's go check out some of the altcoins of this of this market. Let's go check out Mr. Buterol. How's he doing? 118, still not breaking that critical neckline area of 117. And you know the more that it hangs down around here, the more and more that I get skeptical that this is going to operate as a head and shoulders. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm about at the point where I'd say that this is unlikely to operate as a head and shoulders. The right shoulder is, is taking too long. There, there is a timing component of this and, uh, it's 
basically, I'd say that it's pretty much lost its shape. It'll be confirmed that it's lost its shape if it gets back above essentially this area right over here at around 122.5 to 125. Anywhere back above that area, if it can close like a two-hour dildo above there, I would no longer look at that at this as one. It would be confirmed in my mind. Right now, it's just highly suspect. Uh, but hey, for now, you do still have that very orderly drop-off in volume going from left to right. You do have everything that would look about right. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, Wyckoff, top, top information. I mean, this is, you could even call this a head and shoulders, you know, distribution top, get your first markdown, redistribute right over here in the symmetrical triangle, which did have some beautiful uh, hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point right over here. But if it's unable to break, you know, something new will form. And again, when we're talking about patterns, uh, I am, I'm, I'm a lot more excited to, to, to take a bearish pattern in a bearish market, but still these things are painted. So got to be careful uh daily over here still still has time in fact i'd say after today that would probably be the last you know in in, in the next 24 hours if, if it does not get a move to the downside i'd say that this is unlikely to operate as one uh but I, but you know on the daily you are below all major movement averages you are diverging between these guys you know both both these guys this cross right over here and this cross right over here um in fact you're just negating a more powerful cross the upside which is which is a very powerful sign signal in and of its own right telling you essentially what the boss and the algorithm are likely doing uh, giving giving you insight and in how they're programmed and really just generating liquidity from the less educated and less sophisticated bots um in that way but uh but hey until you actually break 117 it's just it's just it's just another hunt uh and perhaps even a setup for a trap so if if, if it does if it does confirm below that area yeah you do have uh you have a measured move on this pointing all the way down to what is it like uh one or sorry, sixty nine dollars. Um, great number, great, absolutely great number. But again, needs to needs to start, you know, picking it up relatively soon. Uh, weekly over here, weekly did close a doji, a long legged doji dildo last week. But here, here's how I treat it. You know, people are going to be looking at this and telling you that is a sign of indecision and reversal. Well, it's not a sign of reversal until you actually have con what's called a continuation. The people in the technical analysis program know this and they know what to look for. Um, as far as I can say right now, uh, as long as you're below the 10 simple on the weekly, I don't see any reason to be bullish on this by the same token. I mean, I mean, you'd have to even take out the high of this guy at 134 and a half. So a lot of work needs to be done. Doesn't mean it can't be, doesn't mean it can't be done, but it until that happens, I'm still leaning with, especially as long as you're below the 10, the, the 10 simple, I'm definitely leaning to the downside right over here. Uh, weekly Stokes, we're actually trying to get out of the bearish uh, zone, but still still in heavy control. Uh, weekly weekly DMI ADX, uh, trend strengthening a little bit once again, but not really, mm, I mean, it's it's there. It's there to be fair, but not not really a big fan of uh of I'm, I'm not i don't really see any any of this as like a big signal on any of these indicators essentially to me this is just consolidation you know also in between supports and resistance and basically this guy's gonna be you know somewhere around a little bit below 100 it's gonna be your major support uh let's actually look at the weekly on cmes by the way as well cme weekly is i think is extremely easy to read you have this bearish uh bearish engulfing dildo right over here on heavier volume than uh than what you did prior again just another rejection of the 10 simple and then down uh, again as long as we're below this area right over here you know I, I'm, I'm quite bearish uh, don't get me wrong i'm very very bearish on this let's go look at gbtc on the weekly we've not done this either and same sort of thing over here in fact gbtc on the weekly looks like it wants to go uh gbtc on the weekly makes me think that it is it's it's likely to go f it's it's likely to break down f you know sooner rather than later Again, my biggest my my biggest counterpoints to the more bearish resolution in the more current time frames is essentially just because everyone's thinking the same thing right now. Uh, I don't think that there's too many people bullish off of what we're looking at, unless if you know someone's got to have a fractal over there. It's like the fucking fractal gang. It's like they're like fractal, 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 fractal. And then it summons Hagen Reed. He's like, oh, you have summoned a very powerful fractal. Maybe we go a moon. Blood moon. Hi. Fractal. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. You know, and the deceiving part with fractals is that they will work out, but you don't know when they're going to work out. So it's like, all right, how do you manage risk on something like that? And then also... <laughs> you could be wrong like a hundred times before it actually plays out. It's just one of those things like people want to look at it and, uh, and, and think that they always play out. I don't know any professional who uses fractals, man. Um, not, not a single one, not a single one, uh, in a professional world. When I came from, when, when I used to be a market maker, uh, authorized trader on New York Stock Exchange, Arca, 
No one used fractals down there, man. Not a single person. I don't know anyone who has over, you know, a decade or, or, or two worth of experience who uses fractals and makes shit tons of money. Doesn't mean that they don't exist. They probably, do. I mean, maybe they do. But I'd like, I'd have to meet them first in order for me to be able to verify myself. And then I could say, oh, maybe there's something to this. Until then, fractal. Anyways, uh, for now, you know, uh, I believe that Bitcoin's doing something very similar over here to what to what it did over here in 2014. Again, very similar market cycles. You see uh, similar characteristics, brotherly characteristics, not necessarily identical twin characteristics, which is what the fractalers would tell you. But um, but as far as you know, brotherly characteristics within these charts, yeah, I do kind of see it that way. I can see that Bitcoin's actually rallying up a little bit now, so maybe I should get ready for a position. Are we gonna Bart now or Bart later? Anyways, we'll get to, to that probably later. Um, but uh, but 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 essentially, because you know we're dealing with human emotions, we're always dealing with that with that with that constant variable of human traders, right? Human traders, of course, there are bots, there are there are algorithm uh, algorithmic traders, no doubt about that. But who are they programmed by? Humans, and because they are programmed by that, and because they do have you know inputs like quite literally like a scientific equation, they can be relatively. This is a bad way to say it, but relatively pred predictable. I hate that I just said it like that, but to just make it you know make it easy to say and this is why you get market cycles that play out similarly amongst amongst all assets there are like you know certain things that are essentially check, checked off that you look for and then the asset itself the particular asset like you know bitcoin for example or whether it's oil or gold or fucking you know microsoft stock whatever it is they're going to have their personal way that they play out that that they that they kind of adhere to that so this is bitcoin's way that it plays it out um over history and as you can see we do have a we do have a great example of what violent capitulation looks like right over here look at the volume characters in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here that's exactly what i'm looking for when Bit if bitcoin is going to play out a more violent capitulation in this market cycle as again i do not believe that it's found the lows if you want the full-on look on that if you want the full-on explanation an hour is long worth definitely go check out the playlist titled long-term analysis uh but you know as far as far as that goes do, does it need to be the more violent way of capitulation no it doesn't if bitcoin can go sideways for a very long time and cause the same emotion a same emotional response as what this very violent downwards uh, move over here incites in, in in people well that would cause the same you know thing in the that that uh, that would serve the same purpose is what i'm trying to get at so how do you do that well going sideways for an extremely long period of time to just make people bored or or financially forced to capitulate of course there are certainly a lot of people a lot of hodlers who you know are operating off some sort of fractal time frame that says you know bitcoin has to be be 90,000 by 2022 that's very misleading doesn't uh, I, I don't you know can that happen maybe there I, I could actually show technical analysis way of maybe getting there but I don't believe that that's the most likely thing um, but what I can say is that there's people who will be going off those assumptions uh, naively thinking that it's a done deal it has to happen and those people will you know they, uh, they will make financial decisions in their lives that could lead to them being vulnerable to prolonged periods of essentially non-movement or just or, or down or hanging down around here you know if someone's making a plan for that in the future well they they're going to discount the fact that it can't that that it can actually do something else um so again a, a, as always when it comes to trading there are there are variables there well, with technical analysis all we're doing is we're just you know describing situations and coming up coming up with statistical probabilities and making trades off that just trading like a trading like a casino essentially uh casino mentality anyways um so yeah i'm getting way sidetracked but my point is is that capitulation is always forced capitulation is forced whether it's by the by the very violent downwards move like this guy right over here or if it's going to be extremely prolonged sideways or sorry uh, an extremely prolonged sideways movement you know like what if bitcoin were to go f sideways for five to ten years i'm mean, i'm not saying that this is going to happen but what if 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 it did that around you know the one thousand or two thousand area a uh, thousand dollar level well Again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Just saying, you know, as an example, as a, as, as a thought study, uh, that's going to cause a lot of people to not want to play the game. They're going to have to take their money out, whether they're forced to or they just lose interest. Uh, so again, if and if you are the kind of person who's having a, an emotional response to that statement, again, I'm just I'm just stating what you know what is possible, what that could entail. But that also means that you're probably the person who would be in trouble if that angers you. Um, so just to keep it real anyways, 
Oh my God, so fucking sidetracked. I apologize about that. My point is, and why I'm even pointing this out, uh, is because this guy right over here, this volume, nowhere near what you did right over here. Again, I wanna see this volume over here in relation to this volume right over here. That's gonna be the more aggressive way. Uh, in fact, what we have, what, what it looks like we have is a failure to, to communicate between this guy right over here and this guy right over here. That looks eerily similar to what we're doing right over here in relation to this guy right over here. Now, not only that, but what got us into that, into the same sort of predicament is very similar as well. Putting a descending triangle right over here and then drops down and gets your blood eagle on about 53 and a half percent lower um, over over really a few weeks. And then what do we do over here? Well, drop down and get your blood eagle on off that uh, descending triangle right over there. Another 53 percent to the downside right over there. Then it pumps back up. It pumps back up, you know, corrective move about 25 percent. And then what do we have right over here? A corrective move pumping up another like, you know, 20 and a half percent as well. Look at the volume signatures after, you know, dropping into this area. It's relatively light relatively below the moving average on this guy well what do we have on over, on over here very similar as well very similar as well although that is not necessarily a bad thing in fact i would be looking for a period of low vol uh, low volume um after after true capitulation is hit i mean you you basically have the same read right over here but that's also why i'm not in any sort of a uh any sort of a rush to get into this um if and when it does if it when it does bottom when it actually when i feel like it actually has bottomed for now, uh, this area right over here, just extremely reminiscent of this area right over here in a lot of different aspects. You have you have a lot of similar, uh, very similar exponential movement average crosses, although that's not necessarily necessary. That's not necessarily necessary. That's not redundant enough. If we put on the 200 simple, you can see that we're essentially just playing around in this in this range right over here. And that's that's how I treat it right now. As long as Bitcoin is above the 200 simple at 3250, don't want to get too bearish. As long as Bitcoin is is opening and closing uh, weekly doors below the 200 exponential, not at all in any way, shape, or form bullish. Uh, so again, if you want if you want the simple explanation uh, to just repeat and tell, and until essentially this thing actually provides some signals uh, of it wanting to move and break this area, uh, either which way that it is, that's what I'd be going off of. And that's really all it needs to be. People can do all their sort of extremely sophisticated and fancy technical analysis, and, and it looks really cool and sexy and sleek, but. At the end of the day, what actually gets things done is is these guys right over here, and uh, and they have been getting price action extremely well. Now, just based off the weekly though, there is something to be aware of, right? There is something to be aware of, and essentially this: if Bitcoin actually does take out the low of this guy, or the, or, I mean, bit, well, basically this guy. This is the low of that last kind of uh, area. Uh, if Bitcoin actually does even just tick below this low at thirty four seventy, and this is on Bitstamp, um, not BitMexico, they will change. Just look, at, just look at the uh, at the low of your last weekly dodo. If Bitcoin actually just ticks below that. I I would be looking for continuation of the downside. Uh, I know people are going to be looking at this as an inverted, you know, what do you want to call it? Inverted hammer dildo, a doji dildo, whatever the fuck you want to call it. People are going to be looking at it because, well, that's what people do. Um, and, but again, it's not confirmed at all as a reversal until you have, you know, one uh, confirmation uh, of follow through, which we do not have. And two, I want to see volume on it as well. In fact, on this guy, we don't really have like crazy volume or anything like that. So Again, looking at, you know, keeping that in mind, keeping that within mind, uh, it's more of a question mark than anything. And, and in my and in my opinion, probably painted. But um, again, you know, if we do bring up the MBT signal, which has been updated to include to be inclusive for the liquid and lightning upgrades, and we put it on the daily, again, you can't use it on the weekly, it does not work on the weekly. Uh, we have a very similar read on this guy as well, and this thing has this thing has basically called every top and every bottom in Bitcoin's history, like like big top and big bottom in, in Bitcoin's history, perfectly. I mean, it, you know, it's called called twenty thousand over here, called six thousand right over here as the bottom of this area. Yes, I know it's not the ultimate bottom, but it was, you know, that that was capitulation move. That is what capitulation does look like, by the way. Uh, an example of it, um, obviously not the overall mark cycle low, but that that is essentially like if you live through that, you you have seen it. You have like that is what it looks like when you go from twelve thousand. 6,000 or sorry when you go from what was it it was basically like right here that was a straight shot down yeah 12,000 to 6,000 losing 50% in the span of really what was like less than a week that is that is capitulation uh, on an asset that uh, of this size um, again going to be different for different sort of at, you know different sort of uh, individuals but the overall principles do to apply uh, this area right over here again let's compare it on the MVT signal to the area that we were just looking down in 2014 again this this area right over here uh, this area right over here lining up with this area right over here and I'm gonna now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna put a nice horizontal right here and let's see where does that end up in our current stature well this and, and sorry now I'm oh you motherfucker you bastard. 
uh, and now I'm going to zoom in on this guy. And what, is it, what does it look like? We're straddling the same sort of a level. So again, this is something that's completely divorced from price action. It is a network value divided by the daily transaction value. That's not related to our price volume and time indicators that we typically look at. So to have these things essentially lining up with each other is eerily similar and remember bitcoin typically bought you know puts in major bottoms you know below this 50 mark right over here so uh it's you know it's still got some room to go still got some room to go so uh, keep that one in mind um i forgot to look at the fibs actually did forget to oh you you bastard yeah i forgot to look at the fibs on uh on our gdax chart right over here let's see if we're lining up with anything right now um Okay, let's get this guy out and flying around. There we go. And let's bring this one up. And how do we want to do this? Yeah, we, let's do it. Uh, dildo body, dildo body. There we go. That's actually lining up with a lot of things. You can see that we're hanging on to the 618 right now. It's proven a bitch to, to actually break. Um, but you did get that. You did get that pick me up for, uh, from the bot target at 618 and then sell the 382. Beautiful. That is kind of what you, that, that is pretty much what you want to see uh if we did pick it up once again and then sold the 0.5 that's going to typically be your next target if things are really trying to spend their time um that wouldn't that should not throw you off either so that's why i'm leaning in this area and why i don't really want to commit to a position either way just yet tried out a scout position yesterday it, it actually ended up working out but don't you know i i, I don't I'd rather just wait for price action to tell me if this area is going to break or not. I don't want to play that game again in this range right over here because it is, you know, it's it's once again BART territory. So, yeah, if we go down to the very low time frames, what can we see over here? Mm, not really much. I mean, you're not really getting told anything. 30 minutes Stokes just crossed up, baby. We're going higher. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's go check out uh, Mr. Ripple's. Let's, let's look at some alt cones over here. 31 and a half cents. And what is he looking like? Again, still still like a sick puppy. As long as we're below this guy right over here, 34 and a half cents, there is nothing really positive to be looking at for this guy. I mean, e I mean, sorry, in, in even really back above 44 and a half cents, it's like it's hard to be positive on this guy. Uh, three day dildo sharp, you know, a couple of, couple of uh, uh, well, I mean, what do you call this? I mean, you, I mean, th these charts just look ugly, man. They just look really ugly. Uh, three day Stokes crossing over, rejecting getting out of the bearish control zone. They just, they, 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 they are comfortable in there. Three day uh, RSI, same sort of a thing. You know, higher time frames will will help get rid of a lot of the noise. And of course, as long as you have your death cross right over here, as long as you're below all major movement averages, don't like it. Uh, Stellar over here, Stellar. Uh, Peter Brandt came up with, came out with something just awesome earlier, and he and he, he said, Stellar. Uh, I forget what it, I forget what what was the impetus, but he basically said that it's going to six and a half cents, and then like literally less than a tenth of a or around a tenth of a cent. Now, do I think that that's going to happen? I I'm not the kind of and I'm not I'm not like other analysts. I'll never say that something is definitely going to happen. Like that's definitely going to happen. No, I, I can't say that because that's not true. Uh, what I can say though is that this chart is pretty nasty. You've got a bull trap right over here. Then that uh, then lost your overall support right over here. I mean that's strike two. You know it's you don't you only need one strike on this guy right over here. Whenever you have a failed breakout, very fucking bad. But to come over here and then and then lose this area right over here, strike number two. I mean retest that area and reject off of it, strike number three. I mean you even got four strikes. You got a three day little death cross right over here below all major movement averages. Very fucking bad very bad um now am i saying that this thing's going to six and a half cents like tomorrow no i you know again timing of it is not you know it's not something that that uh, that i think can be done and if bitcoin you know bounces off its you know 32 50 support or whatever it ends up being uh then then this thing probably bounces off this like nine and a half su uh, cent support right over here but overall yeah it's not a healthy chart and this is something that has been relatively strong compared to other things in this market, although this chart is actual dog shit as well, just in the way that it's set up. But other ones are like, you know, a garbage fire plus dog shit plus, you know, AIDS. So that is much worse. That is that is to really put in perspective on how much, you know, worthless things really are in this market. Even with this one that is not pumped and dumped the whole way through, it still does not look healthy. This is in no way, shape or form a good chart. I just don't understand. I don't understand why people think that this is a bottom right here. I don't see it. Uh, I would not be willing to consider this a bottom at all until you, I mean, I mean, really until you get back above the 200 exponential right around, you know, 18 cents, but I'd be, I'd be, I'd be considering it a back above uh, 14 cents. If you could get back above there, we might have something to talk about, but for now, uh, failure upon failure, um, 
So yeah, uh, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. How's Mrs. Litecoin doing? She's 30 and a half, uh, 30 and a half dollars. And again, as long as you're below this area right over here, bad, bad. Again, how many rejections have we had? Bless you, Elsa. Uh, we have one, two, three, four rejections right along this area. This is also the 21 exponential moving average, but you know, you have this support right over here, 20, uh, basically $29 and 90 cents resistance right over here $32 and you know, 25 cents, something like that. Uh, this was your breakout from this, uh, inverted head and shoulders failed breakout right over here. Again, anytime you get a failed breakout and you come back down below the signal trend line, essentially very, 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 and 10 more billion varies bad. Um, so while, you know, as long as it's below this area, I would treat this as heavily bearish. Uh, what do we, what do we have to look at on our, on our oscillators right over here? Daily Stokes still headed down, but it's hard taking a short when they're like that. Uh, two day coming down, of course, uh, three day. Um, yeah, three day looks like Bitcoin essentially. I mean, th this is why I don't think it's too much worthwhile to look at too many altcoins unless they have like something completely different going on. You know, they, they pretty much all follow each other, right? So you look at Bitcoin and it, generally gets 99% of the altcoins. Not all of them, of course, not all of them, but most of them, most of them, that's all it needs to be really. Um, yeah, three day little death cross right over here. This one got it a lot earlier than the other one. So it's, you know, it's, it's relatively weaker. Although then again, this just doesn't have enough price action history to even really populate these things. So it doesn't really matter that much, not really. Uh, so yeah, as again, as long as you're below this area right over here, 32 and 32 and a quarter, don't like it, not good, bad, bad. Uh, Litecoin man, bad. Um, spies, do we want to look at spies? No, they'll open up later. The, uh, they, uh, we'll be actually, we'll, we'll, we'll look at them live later today. Uh, and this video is probably already getting long enough anyway. So let's go back on, on to Mr. Bitcoin right over here. And uh, I guess I can just briefly talk about my my my, my lower targets if 3250 breaks, which again, I want to be very adamant, adamantly clear. I do not believe that anything, any one of these are are worth talking about until 3250 actually breaks. If it does break, then yes, very much worth talking about. And I'll just leave that there. <laughs> but but basically 2300 to 2600 right over here in this blue box territory, which is also the 886 Fibonacci trace mode, which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014. Got some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in around this area as well. And the volume profile is having a nice thick AF node coming around this area, which is actually bigger than what you did at 6000, which Sure, everyone remembers that one as well. That was uh, quite quite an intense area, right? Um, and if we do put it on the BLX index, which has a little bit more history, we can actually populate the 377 exponential on the weekly, and that's coming in around 2600, which pretty damn big deal to me coming from traditional markets. That is a very big one, and I'm curious to see if it does hold weight in cryptocurrency land. We haven't really had the chance to test it before because it's you know it it needs 377 weeks just to populate one tick, right? So it's uh, it's it's relatively young in its uh, in its exponential life. Um, but yeah, if that area does fail, you know, again, I'm never going to say that this area is definitely going to be the bottom or definitely not going to be the bottom because it, it, it implies a gross misunderstanding of what actually constitutes a market cycle bottom. You have all these analysts saying that 1800 is definitely not going to be the bottom or, or 1100 is definitely going to be the bottom or Bitcoin's already bottomed. Well, the reaction off this bottom right now is why I would say that it's, it's really fucking unlikely that it's bottom. Again, go to the long-term analysis playlist if you want the full and explanation of that. Um, but, uh, but, but my point is, is that you can't call anything a bottom until you actually see the reaction off that potential area. And to begin with, you know, a mark cycle bottom is going to be put in essentially by someone with extremely deep pockets. So that person's going to hit the buy button and their, 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 their purpose, their intent is to buy up as much as possible in order to really not, because they, they, they know that if they do reverse the market cycle, it ain't getting anywhere near that that uh, that low ever again. So they want to get as much as possible to maximize their financial opportunity. For the people who think that, well, I have a line right here because uh, historically speaking, that's where some support was. So definitely get a bottom there. It's like, no. Or it's, I, I saw someone say like, this line right here, there's only one little touch, okay? You know what that means? It's not happening. It's like, that's not how it works, like at all. So be careful with that sort of mentality because uh, you will be misguided and misled, whether it's naively or deliberately, I don't know, but you always gotta give people the benefit of the doubt, right? Maybe it's probably just naive. Um, 
So yeah, need, need to see the reaction off of it first and then we can actually call a bottom if it's gonna be a bottom. But for now, Bitcoin, again, once again, under pressure. In the lower time frames, just to wrap this bitch up, uh, what I'd be looking at is right here. Right here, as simple as this, baby, as simple as this. If you break above 35.50 and close a two hour deal above there, not really much stopping you from about 36.20ish area. If things get above there, then I'd be looking at 36.80 right over here. Uh, by the same token, while this is a bearish pattern in a bearish market and overall most things are pointing downwards, except that everyone's fucking thinking the same thing right now. If 36, uh, 10 breaks or sorry, 35, 10 breaks right over here, then probably do, or, or at that point in time, I just don't see much holding you up from about 3350. Uh, and under that, you know, likely just meet the mesh move off this guy right over here. This mesh triangle that we put in, you know, what was it like a month ago or so? Uh, all the way down to about 3250. And again, I would like to reiterate and and, uh, and re say that please, 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 please be careful. Um, please be careful if you know if it, I know it sounds sexy when a lot of a lot of crypto YouTubers and shit say that we're gonna go straight down from here to like 2000 or 2500 or 2800. There's a lot to chew through on the way down. So while I do think that it's very likely that Bitcoin actually does get down there, uh, as we just saw. Um, it's, I think it's likely gonna take a lot of time. Just like you saw at the 6,000 area, everyone getting really, really bullish and really, really bearish just off every little move. It's, you know, it's the purpose of these marks are to are to generate liquidity for for, for the big boys. And uh, if you don't think so, then you're, prob you're probably that person who is the liquidity. Anyways, um, that is that is it for this morning. I'll be back on later tonight with some live stream action. Looking forward to see you guys there. Hopefully we get some price action as well. I believe that it's likely, especially with uh, US, up, US markets opening once again. So we get all the big boys uh, back in their battle stations and that should uh, that should provide some, some, nice, uh, some nice fun. So I wish you a happy rest of your Tuesday and uh, as always, a pleasure speaking with you. Take care.